So we got Subway, Extremepedia, or Taco Time. <laughs> start bench finish? No, start bench cut. <laughs> oh, that, why was I saying finish? <laughs> start. Well, then you could finish. Uh, start Taco Time. Okay, start Taco Time. What's the last two? Subway and Extremepedia? Uh, bench, Extreme Pita, and cut Subway. Okay. Oh, really? Had, had it for eight years playing hockey every, every road trip. Subway? Subway in the bus. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, true. Hey, hey, everybody. We're back for another episode of Off the Hosel. This is episode 70. My name is Drew Kroser, and I'm, I'm your host. And I'm joined by the picking machine, Danny H. Koshi, what's going on, man? Not a lot. My eye is twitching right now. Twitching. You see that? You see that? No Troy today. No Troy. No Troy. He's, you know what? He's working. Yeah, he's working. Getting a new house. He'll be back. I miss him though. I miss, I haven't seen Troy in probably like almost a month now, I think. It's a but, long time. Yeah, it is. I miss the 7.30, 6.30. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I miss you, bro. Uh, he got his new putter, though, he said. He got all his clubs now. He's pumped. He put a post out yesterday. Yeah, has he shot with them yet? Do you know nope. or not? No. No, he wanted to go today, but he couldn't. Damn. Uh, well, Dan, before we get going here, this is a Nissan-driven podcast. Like to mention, the number one place in Regina to get your next vehicle, oil change, or any vehicle-related needs that are located at 1111 Broad Street in Regina, Saskatchewan. It's time you drive. Nissan. Nissan. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Danny H., please let everyone know where we're recording from live. We're recording from at Divots Indoor Golf on Rossdale Boulevard. They're closed right now, but check them out next year. Um, yeah, everyone, if you haven't, I'm sure everyone's golfing outside now. So, um, But next year when it gets cold and those courses close, come to Divots. Yeah, it's the best. There's nowhere better. Great people, great seven staff. Seven simulators. Seven sims. Lots of beers. Lots of beers. Molson's. Yeah, it's it's it's, <laughs> it's a, a good time here. Good time. So come on down the divots when you can next year. Um, yeah. Anyways, Danny. Lots of chat about this week. Hockey, sports news, and whatever else you want to discuss. And uh, in the doghouse with Danny H. And in the doghouse with Danny H. New segment. Brought to you by? Bruce. 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 Okay, Danny. Going on? How are things? Um, not bad, not bad. I actually, well, I told you before we started recording here, I went golfing on uh, Sunday, first round of the year. Nice. How'd it go? I shot 86. 84, I thought. No, 86. 86. Danny H. The pick and machine. So, yeah, I know all you, like, intense golfers are probably like, oh, he sucked. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> no. All right. Um, I'm not, I don't golf a lot, so. For my first round, I think it's pretty good. Usually, I'm breaking like 110 my first round, so um, I'll take 86. I'll take 86 for my for uh, my first round. Okay, well let's get right into here. Then I'm gonna ask this question now. You got your new clubs from TaylorMade, Mike Langan, a uh, weapon, and TaylorMade Golf. They're our partners. We're their partners. We shake hands. We're friends. Yep. So Dan, talk about uh, what do you like the most? You talk. You tell us what y'all got in the bag. Uh, yeah, walk us through it. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm not being biased just because they're our partners, but... Um, Sick hat, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not being biased, but... Uh, no, uh, I lo- they were unreal. Um, the, the driver is probably one of my favorite things about it. Sim 2 Max? Yeah, the Sim 2 Max driver, Tony. <laughs> um, Tony. No, I, I, I mean, I can't complain about anything that's in the bag. Um, you know, the, the my driving usually is probably one of my weakest points, I would say, in my game. Um, I'm, not saying it's, I'm not saying I was cranking every every drive I had, but yeah. I definitely had a lot better uh, drives, I think, and um, maybe it's just me getting a little lucky, or it's maybe it's the club. I think yeah. It, I think it's the club. I think it's and a little sober, probably. I, yeah, I was sober, actually, <laughs> Sunday. Well, I only had, I had three drinks. So. He was wasted. Three drinks? No, I wasn't wasted. <laughs> three waters. Three beers, <laughs> and um, I think that's probably what comes into effect. I think usually when I when I golf, I have a, lo- a little too much, then and my game just goes to shit, but yeah. I think I just got to try and contain i don't know when i'm on the co- course i don't know about you but i just want to slug back beers <laughs> i just want let's get into it boys you know especially when you're with a big group of yeah boys. yeah when you're um, with your buddies it's a lot different yeah we, we had a smaller group on sunday so you know and it was a sunday so we kind of just took it easy but yeah so i heard and, you went and how's the putter oh the spider it's big, a bitty spider like, danny went on the putter the, the buddies i went with they can attest this my putter was hot 
I love I love the spider. It's sick. Unreal. Um, yeah, the spider's good. I would definitely recommend anyone to buy it because it worked for me, and I'm not that great. So <laughs> I heard you went, you you did some golfing, didn't you? Yeah, I played uh, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And all at the Royal, right? Your club. All at the Royal Regina. Yeah, played. Um, What'd you shoot? What was the or what was the highest score you had? Highest lowest, score. Lowest score. Lowest score. Yeah. Seventy and highest was seventy-seven. There you go. Not a big deal, eh? I, I go 86 here, boys, and then, oh, I'll let you up to 70. Well, to be fair, it's the first thing you hit your clubs. Yeah, you know, you've got what? How many rounds have you gone now? Five now. Five? Six? six? Yeah. Okay. So in five, six rounds, I'm going to be 72. And then plus, you know, 180 in five months in the wintertime. So. Yeah, you yeah, went lots. So. Ever watch it? I was like, oh, I only played five rounds. So technically, like, me getting 86 and you getting the – 77. I'm not far away from you. <laughs> or you I'm golf shit. All year. So I think he's shitty and I'm good. Well, look out. <laughs> What's that off Happy Gilmore? When he's like, you know what the pathetic thing is, Shooter? You've been playing golf your whole life. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> me. I'm happy there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know unreal. What, you know what the pathetic thing is, Coach? <laughs> You've been doing this your whole life. <laughs> I'm a wow. hockey player playing golf today. <laughs> um, Green yeah. jacket, gold jacket, who gives a shit? <laughs> Sorry, I had that. That's all good. Yeah. Uh, Warner Bros just shut us down. Um... Yeah, no, golf was good, though. It was freezing Sunday. Saturday yeah, was nice. It was, ah, wind, it was windy Sunday. Windy Sunday. Was Saturday nice, too, so or was it windy? Friday was really nice. You Friday I played. Oh. I, I wish I was golfing I went through two shirts. <laughs> so hot out. <laughs> You're just shedding them or what? Sweating too much? <laughs> no, I was practicing at the chain of the vehicle for oh. the golf course. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was Friday was a, But no wind, though, Friday, right? For no. Most part, yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> no. every time I golf, it's just the wind's just pounding. <laughs> Sorry, he just brought up Wendy. Turner hit a he had a, a putt downhill. Yeah. He's like, just hammered it by the hole. He's like, I'm like, why'd you hit it so hard? He's like, dude, I could have farted on it. I would have went down the, the edge of the green. <laughs> oh boy. So what, what did he shoot uh, on the weekend or Friday or whatever? Uh, I think yeah, 81, 80, 79, yeah. 78. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, it was good. It was good. Good golfing. We're all back out and we're all doing it safe. Are you uh, are you throwing on any wagers on your your games or not yet? You're gonna yeah. I the first one was twenty bucks. Won that. Second one was twenty bucks. Won that. And then I lost on Sunday. Oh, okay. Lost twenty. So you're, okay. But you this know is what? You're though? plus twenty right now. It's just like no, a twenty bucks. I'm up. Point. I'm up. Yep. Danny, thoughts on last week's guest, Dale Vallali, chatting the PGA Tour, the creator of the pork missile. Uh, you know, the dog father actually is Snoop Dogg, but Dale's a close second. Oh, yeah. He's a dog father in Canada and yeah. in the States now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That uh, that episode was hilarious. Um, he knows, I mean, he knows his golf, that's for sure. He's a pretty cool dude, and if you haven't checked that one out, check it out because that, that's a banger. He got lots of views. He got it's lots of views, listeners. I don't know what it is. Yeah, like he, you know, had a lot of fun on there. I just find it cool with him, Canadian, being uh Abraham answer, he's a Mexican, right? Yeah. His caddy. Like, Canada and Mexico, it's kind of funny. They yeah. match up, you know? Well, and like, the ironic thing, obviously, like, with my, like, my auntie lives in Mexico full-time, so that probably is easier, so whatever's going on there. But, I mean, yeah. it's it's pretty cool. And, like, obviously, he answered a few questions, too, on there, just talking about, you know, from meters to yards and how much work do you actually do, and do you guys have, like, meetings with your player? Oh, caddies do a lot, actually. I, I can not believe it. Like, yeah. He said, I wake up in the morning, and I check out which way the wind's going. Is it going north to south and south to north? And it's just yeah. like, I was like, I'm fired. <laughs> yeah. So too much work for our brains. Yeah, not very good at math. This guy, and this guy. So not math guys. Yeah, great pod though. Thanks to the end of the deal coming on the show. Yeah, lot of fun with him. He'll, he'll be on again, and he'll be back in the bag, looping away. And oh, actually, I just we'll talk about later. Answer played well this week, but we'll do that later. Mm-hmm. Sports talk, hockey. Uh, what else is going on? I mean, hockey. There's four games left for the Leafs. Um, yeah. Well, let's get right into the NHL talk then. We're already here. Okay. Yeah, the playoffs are the playoffs are upon us. Um, they have, still haven't announced what they're doing for if they're doing a bubble or not. I don't know if the players are going to really want a bubble. To be honest, uh, I they said it was terrible yeah. last year. They hated it. They had a Starbucks with a little mini court <laughs> and the, like I don't know if you saw Ra- Robin Leonard his little rant about it, but no, he I I don't think the players are going to agree to the same kind of system they had last year with the bubble in Canada. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens, but I just hope my Leafs can make it past the first round. That's all I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you about that. And obviously, the Leafs playing, you know, really good. 
Edmonton's kind of creeping up there. I think the Leafs probably have it locked up. They should unless yeah, they, they go got, on an absolute no, downfall. Yeah, they'll, they'll be in first. They'll finish first. Um, uh, Winnipeg and Montreal are now tied. Winnipeg is tough though. They lose Ealers for the year. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. And he's been their best guy. I don't know how, but he's been so good. Yeah, he's, he's kind of one of the under underrated players. I think uh, Ealers, but um, yeah, but they're tied up and uh, the Oilers are behind the Leafs. So I think that's that's your playoffs, right? Is uh, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I think we're going to be playing Montreal, but if they come out and win, like wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> well, they haven't done it since I didn't know they haven't played each other like in playoffs. Or no, seventy nine, I think it was. Holy so that's that's a long time. You think like teams are in the same division? You think oh they must have played recently, yeah. but yeah, it's been a long time since they they've seen each other in the playoffs. So I hope I kind of hope that um, they stay in four that four spot so we can play them because Winnipeg I think is is a, they're a good team. I think they're going to be a tough team in the playoffs. So. Yeah. Well, and then it is at least beat the Canucks back to back nights. But I wanted to bring up Cole Lind getting his first NHL game and now playing consistently in the last four games. Yeah, he's got four games under his belt now or Dude, he played I think sixteen and a half minutes in his first NHL game. Yeah. One. That's more ice time than I get in adult safe. <laughs> and he's getting this at the NHL the best lead in the world. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. So oh, good for him. Good for him. And he started in the fourth line. And by end of first period, end of End of the first period yeah. was playing with Bo Horvat and Brock Besser. Are those guys good? <laughs> Is that any good? So, yeah, congrats to Cole. He looks great out there. Uh, I know they had a tough one. This is Tuesday night. Tough one on Monday night. They played yeah. the uh, Oilers. I texted him. I said, hey, man, like, good game. It's tough to play those guys. He goes, ha you think? Yeah. They're a little fast. So, yeah. with McDavid and Dreisaitl, but And Vancouver will make the playoffs. So, it's just, I think he'll just finish the year with them. and But gain some experience under his belt, right? So Yeah, we should get him back in helps. time for Adult Safe. Yeah, we need, yeah, we need them. We need a call uh, pickup. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Cole Caulfield, uh, the, the stud, the sniper. You know, what do you have, seven goals in college this year bring it called up? Scores back-to-back overtime winners for the Canadians. Yeah. Yeah. The last one was against my Leafs on Monday night, so I wasn't too happy to see that. But I, I was telling – I live with a couple of my buddies, and I was just telling them we were watching the game. I'm like, this kid's good. He's oh, going to yeah. be a hell of a player. and. And I don't want to see it because Montreal's in my our division, the least division, but uh, he's going to be a good player. Yeah, absolutely. This shot, hey, what a shot he has. Got a laser beam. Yeah. But Freaking laser beam. Did we talk about everyone? Talk about all the teams good that are points important. that happened. Oh, I guess we talked about Tom Wilson. Thoughts oh, on that? Yeah. Oh, man, did you think he, you think he should have got suspended or what? No, he got fined. I know. Do you think he should have got suspended? Though? I don't know. I talked to a few guys today, too, and they're like, well, what do you think? I'm like, he... <laughs> One thing that I, didn't, I mean, he slammed. Uh, Who's whose head was it again? Uh, but I guess Panarin. But Panarin jumped or hit him first. That's what so I mean. Then it's he kind of antagonized him. I don't think Wilson like you know, he slammed him nice, but I don't think it was like a something where well, he's got his helmet on. I'm gonna take his head off. And, yeah. But it was just all. I think it was all heat of the moment, right? I mean, Wilson's that guy who's gonna get in the gr- in, in there when there's a scrum. So, um, yeah, five thousand dollar fine. That's it, right? That's twenty bucks for me. <laughs> like no, like, that's like twenty bucks for like to, or to him. Sorry, like yeah, he, to him. Yeah, to sorry. him, it's nothing. Not to me. Not to you. Yeah, I was like, what are you rich? <laughs> Where'd you get the money from? Oh, the podcast is going crazy. Yeah, give me some. <laughs> um, the, no, Tom Wilson. No, like even when he like went on the down on the guy's back of the head. Like, yeah, even he, he, like he, he didn't pertuse him. And I've seen Wendell Clark and Joey Coit. Like those guys that they they, he just he, he just did it. Yeah. Well, did so, you see? Um, I didn't like him in the box though. Just. <laughs> I don't like that. I thought that was a pitch move, but he's still beauty and a man. Uh, I, so. Yeah, and I can't remember who tweeted out today. Someone said something like any – I think maybe it was Barney, friend of the show. Uh, I think he said any any NHL GM would take Wilson on your team. Oh, and, yeah. In a heartbeat. You know, he's um, the exact – he's a perfect guy you want on every team. You wanted them. Mm-hmm. Did you see uh, John Scott's rant about it? Oh, he, he just came out with a rant about it. He's like, you know, that's just uh, – he's pretty much just saying that's just – you know, I love their grittiness, the toughness, but that's taking it too far. That's pathetic. You know, he's just, yeah, St. John Scott. Didn't he jump Castle? He jumped uh, <laughs> the softest guy in the league, tried to jump him. So it's like, hey, you're the one to talk, John Scott? I mean. Yeah. Like, but, yeah, he, he was just ranting play, he's about it. He's doing his role. He's playing yeah. his role. And you know what? It is. He, he, the only thing I didn't like about it is that it was a nothing game. Yeah. If I it mean, was Pittsburgh and it was. So a, what do you think? I think I'm tuning in the game. They play tomorrow night again. I'm going to watch that game for sure. Yeah. I think whoever, like, just who plays tomorrow night? Someone no. different, right? Because I think no, it's no, it's Washington and uh, New York tomorrow night. Islanders, Rangers. No, Rangers. Oh, yeah, yeah. someone's gonna do something. So tonight, because yeah. this will be when someone's gonna do something. It's, it's no, and if they don't, I think you got a better. 
Panarin get your best player gets tossed on the ground like that. I think you got to respond. Yeah, I um, think so too. And I think that's part. Of, I saw something on Twitter too. With Wilson not getting suspended now, they're going to be head hunting him next game. So it's not like you know, oh, we might not. They might not see him for the rest of the year or whatever until a couple weeks. Might calm down. Like everything's still in the heat of the moment. So I think. Yeah. I think guys are going to be gunning for him, and I think they should. Um, you got to respond, right? Can I just bring some up? Sure, Dan. Oh, I think I brought up on last. No, I didn't. Um, it was Wayne Simmons. He fought uh, that Edler on oh, yeah, Vancouver yeah. for Hyman's hit. And there were all the Vancouver media. Oh, what, what's Simmons doing? Edler's the cleanest guy. It's like even if he had zero penalty minutes in his whole career, what's, yeah. what's wrong with that response? Well, and I, I think even he w- one again. of the announcers was like, you know, Edler did the right thing. He, he, he hit he a accept- guy, and he went, it's cool. Yeah. It's over. He, he accepted. He's not the toughest guy out there, but. I didn't, know he f- I didn't know he fought. He's a big dude, though. I mean, Wilson, dumb, or uh, not Wilson, yeah, Simmons, Simmons. Simmons dumbing him, but um, yeah, I didn't see anything wrong with it. They both, he answered the bell after, after throwing a dirty knee, and nothing wrong with it. Life moves on. Absolutely. Okay, I want to bring up some local talk here in the golf world a little bit. The Weyburn Golf Club. Upgrades coming soon. Looks sick. And, and I love the track. Yeah, so, I got to go out there. I haven't been out there yet, but. Yeah, we'll go out there. We'll play. You know, they have a great 18 holes. Uh, I believe I said they're adding, I forgot the exact number, but X amount of sprinklers and they're upgrading the whole new irrigation system. So it's going to look great. It's going to be nice and green. Uh, they said they have plans to finish the full course by three or five years from now, so 2024. Okay. I think. So uh, in, in that ballpark area, but congrats to them. Obviously, a, a lot of sponsors that helps, you know, mm-hmm. we're not Augusta and Saskatchewan here. and So uh, kudos to them. Yeah. And then I want to bring up a, a note here. I got um, – a golf course in the province, they've seen some, you know, not friendly things done to the golf course. People taking uh, T markers, rental carts. Really? Uh, smashing some tree stumps. Can I? Can you say the name of the course or no? Sure. It's on Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah. Carndiff Golf Club. Uh, oh. So basically, you know, I know some people out there that are, that I'm sure volunteer their time to help with the course and, you know, like, they do it because they, they care for the game and they love the course. But for people to be vandalizing a golf course of that, that's that's unacceptable. Yeah, that's um, pathetic. I mean, why would you do that? So I guess the one guy's been removed, and if anything else happens moving forward, zero policy, which I totally respect. Well, they should, uh, get, they should get charged. Th- there was divots ever... out of the green, dude. Yeah. Like, on the green, someone just did a divot out. Really? Like, you should be slapped in the head. Yeah. That so should be fined almost. Like, jeez. Yeah. So those um, – <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just sitting down in Cardiff. It's too bad. But if you're playing golf, because it's, you know what, you're going to be, there's a lot of new golfers out now. Respect the game. Yeah. Respect exactly. the course. Any course you play, you know, fix your, div- fix your divots, fill your divots. Um, pick, don't eat sunflower seeds in the golf course. If you eat sunflower seeds in the golf oh, course, I've never done that, yeah. Uh, don't litter. Drink, drink beer, though. <laughs> and fill your ball marks. Here's the one thing I will say about that for every golf off. course. Yeah. It, oh. If you play golf and you could fix three divot marks a hole, yours and two others, yeah, would help the greens out. would be unreal. Yeah, don't be lazy and don't say, "Oh, he'll do it," right? Because that's the same old saying. I'm not gonna do it. The next day I'll do it. Yeah, and it's a domino effect. Exactly. So, fix your divots. Respect the golf course. Respect the game. I like it. How good is that? That's good. Good job. And and I guess another rumor too. I heard recently the Publix tournament in Regina. It's a great tournament held at the Tor Hill. Mm-hmm. I haven't, it hasn't been confirmed or denied, but I'm going to drop the rumor news on it because I dropped the rumor on Cole Lind. Thank you for the bump, Linder, on Twitter. But um, the public's hearing's, hearing's not going to go on. Sucks. Okay. Uh, the city end got canceled a few weeks ago. Now this one, that's two big tournaments in your giant. Yeah, that sucks. It's unfortunate. So um, they're pushing it back? I don't know. I, it's it's Just tough. They have the same two dates or same kind of weekends every year. I hope they can kind of figure something out, but if not... Yeah, is what it is, I guess. Moving on. Mm-hmm. Moving on. <laughs> All right, Dan. Yep. Rip up a quick Taylor May ad. Taylor May golf? Yeah. Do it's time to do our golf roundup. I got no notes here for Taylor May ad read. So I'm just going to tell you from experience, and so is Dan. I play the new Sim 2 driver and the high toe wedges and new Spider FGT putter and the Taylor May golf balls. Unreal. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Danny H uses a full Sim 2 Max driver set, wedges, putters. The He's spider. He's got multiple putters. The spider. 
The spider. Spider. Check what? that out. Oh. Team spider. I was so surprised how good how good that thing felt. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's, it's, it's like a sponge. Yeah. Anyhow, play TaylorMade Golf today. Great golf balls, wedges, irons, putters, wedges, drivers, three by five you name it. TaylorMade's got you covered. Check them on social media at TaylorMade underscore Canada and their website. They're, they're a pretty big company. So yeah. Have you heard of them? <laughs> yeah. Have you heard of them? Yeah, we're sponsored athletes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was good. You, did, you pause the camera too? I thought the po- camera paused. We're oh. still going? Okay, let's go. Cool. <laughs> we're going. Okay, the Valspar Championship winner was Sam Burns for his first PGA Tour. What's so funny? Oh, I was just laughing. Just laughing. Have a good time here. Oh, okay. First PGA Tour win. Congrats to Sam Burns. Can you imagine winning the PGA Tour? A seven uh, no, million dollar purse this past weekend. Oh. Seven million. So do the math on that. I get happy when I win twenty bucks at the BLTs. Let <laughs> alone seventy million. Oh my god. Trust goodness. the process. <laughs> um, yeah. So Sam Burns. I'd have to watch a little bit. Keegan Bradley was close. Lost by three. Uh, There's just so many good players. Yeah. It was never any good golf shots. Guess who finished fifth place though? I'm sure you read my notes right now. No, I can't see. Go. Abraham answer. There we fifth go. Fifth place. Look at that cut off that check. Yeah. Oh. Even that I would take. Great playing by Abe. We're Team Abe. Go so, Team Abe. You know, we're, well, we like a lot of golfers, but we're yeah. Team Abe. Um, what else you got? Canadians in the field. Decent week, kind of. Or, sorry, a good two weeks for Canadians in general, but this term not in specific. Mm-hmm. Corey Connors, T21, another solid week for him. Michael Gligic, T29. Mackenzie Hughes, T52. Friend of the show, Adam had one cut, and Nick Taylor was cut. So not a, an okay weekend for Canadians at the the Valspar. Mm-hmm. Did I say that right? Oh, thank God. I would have curbed. The Valspar. Uh, but I didn't want to talk about the seniors, the, uh, sorry, the champions tour, the lefty, Mike Weir. Yeah. Wins. Back in the winning circle. That's pretty cool to see. It's been, a while, been a while for him, eh? It's been a lot of years. Yeah. I couldn't even tell you last time he won. I want to say, I want to say the Masters, but I... I'm sure it'll yeah. be roasted somewhere down the road there. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So, that was pretty cool. Yep. And I did want to apologize, but also bring up, forgot to mention it last week, we were so we were so jacked up for the pod. Brooke Henderson captured her 10th yeah. LPGA Tour win. That was sweet. That was cool, too. Like, she is so good. Like, you just, ugh, when, so you see her, when, you, when you see her win, you just you get happy inside. I don't yeah. know, some of it, you like to see that girl win. I mean, she's... She's unreal. I, and her sister's, you know, looping for her. Like, they're just a good team. And the ball flight, it was always she, You know what I noticed when I watch her? She, like, when she drives, she kind of reminds me of you, where you just go up, just swing, <laughs> grab your teeth, don't even look at it. Just kind of take a glance over, walk away. Well, worst you know, part is I'm, I'm one out of four. She's four out of four every time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. She's yeah. better than you, but no. No, no she but, is. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it just reminds me, the way she swings, her driver reminds me of you, just. Pick up the tee, don't look to, you know, compare to other guys, they look forever. That's me. Yeah. Uh, where's it going now? <laughs> she oh, just no. knows she hits. Oh, no, the wind picked up. <laughs> she knows she's hitting straight, and, yeah, she's unreal. So good for her. Congrats, Brooke. Yeah. Like, this, is, this has been a good pod so far. we got a little bit more to, to go here. Uh, next week, we're off to Wells Fargo Championship in Quail Hollow. This has a lot of your players in it. Mm-hmm. Don't ask me to look it up again because I just turned my phone off. But there's yeah. a lot of your players. Field looks sick. We're excited to sit down and watch some more uh, more golf this weekend. Yeah, that's the one thing with golf though; it's just always it's always, always coming, going. Whether every it's week, European tour, Canadian tour, LPGA, McKenzie tour, PGA. Every week, that's why it's the best. Yep. It's one of the best, one of the best sports, I think. Absolutely, and one of the hardest sports, I think. It is one of the hardest sports. Someone told me that one time. I think they said tennis was harder. No, the racket's this big. Well, <laughs> At least you hit the ball straight. Yeah. I, no, I'd say golf was definitely harder. I, I mean, me and you play tennis. we got to get back into that tennis. But Yeah. Uh, I definitely need to play tennis again. It's a good workout, too. Yeah, I need it. Me, too. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, golf's way harder than tennis, I would say. I, I, yeah. Christian, what do you think? No. Golf. It's golf, yeah. yeah. Golf. Golf's, okay. a, golf's an easy choice. Maybe we'll put that pole up. What's harder? Golf it's got to be golf. If it's you say golf. tennis, you're a psychopath, I think. <laughs> Okay, do you want to go to our uh, segment? Was it Doghouse Danny? No, in the doghouse with Danny H. Everyone see my shirt, by the way, today? Bird Supply. Check him out. Lumsden. Lumsden, Saskatchewan. Support local. Support local. Bodes, that's for you. All right, Danny. All right. 
Nothing stupid. And then, <laughs> no, so last week was my first time doing it. This is the second, uh, second edition. It's always weird the first time. Yeah, I mean, it's, gonna, it's just in the doghouse, if you don't know what it is. In the doghouse with Danny H, me. Five random questions, and it's going to be sports questions, non-sports questions, whatever. So here we go. Question number one. <clears throat> How many PGA wins does Arnold Palmer have? A, 53, B, 58, or C, 62? 62. Oh, nailed it. What are you, ding, 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 you ding, see ding, my phone? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, you got that right. Well, I, I don't want to golf apologize for no reason. Yeah, I was, gonna, well, I was gonna say if you didn't get that right, the you're next one. Pigeon. Ron, 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 yeah, pigeon. Okay, here we go. This is kind of a just a fun one here. Yep. Who would you rather ca- uh, caddy for, Bubba Watson, Ricky Fowler, or Jason Day? Oh. I think I'm not going with Bubba. Oh. Not going with Bubba. Jason Day, such a man missile, sick attire. But Ricky Fowler, I'd love to just hang out with the guy. I think he's one. He looks like Zach Efron. I've said it from day one. So. I guess so. But, <laughs> but he yes, just, he's Ricky just, Fowler. He, seems per, like a, personality wise, he seems like a good guy. So I'd pick him. But And close enough in age, too. It's the party. Yeah. You pick him? Fowler's yeah. answer. All right. Um, for this third question, it's uh, start bench cut. So you, get, you pick, uh, I'm going to name three. This is NHL goalie edition. So okay. I'm going to name three goalies. Whichever out of the three you like, you start, start one, bench one, cut one. Mark Andre Fleury, Connor Hellebuck, or Sergey Bobrovsky. He plays in Florida, right? Yeah, and he's pretty tight this year. Who's the first one? Uh, Mark Fleury. Uh, bench him. Start uh, Bobrovsky and bench uh, Hellebuck. You just no, you benched uh, two guys there. Sorry. Start bench cut. Start Hellebuck. Yep. Uh, what's the second one? Uh, Flurry and uh, Brubowski, and it's cut. Oh, bench, um, sorry, bench Hellebuck <laughs> and cut, uh, what's his name? Flurry? Flurry, yeah. Wow. So what do you do with Brubowski? He's benched. <laughs> you got to roll back. Oh, sorry, okay. B- Brubowski Start. starting. Okay, Brubowski starting. Benched is... Uh, uh, Flurry? No, benched is... Hellebuck? Hellebuck. I think you're cutting yes. Flurry. Okay. I like Flurry. Man, Flurry's Vegas I- is I'm number one the league. now. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to go all future just this year right now. The World Juniors. He still lost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yes. People don't forget. A little quote uh. from Super Bad there. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> start ben- ben- bench cut again. Food edition. All right? And and I is. picked out some uh, ones you like. Okay, we got Subway, Extremepedia, or Taco Time. <laughs> start bench finish? No, start bench cut. <laughs> well, I was saying finish. <laughs> start. Well, time you could finish. Uh, start talk of time. Okay, start talk of time. What's the last two? Subway and Shrimp Pita. Uh, bench and Shrimp Pita and cut Subway. Okay. Oh, had, really? Had it for eight years playing hockey every, every road trip. Subway? <laughs> Subway in the bus. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, true. I like. I mean, I like Subway. Big Subway guy, but. Okay, no so now heads. five, number five. If you could be a pro athlete in one of these sports, which one would you pick? Here we go. A pro badminton player, a pro table tennis player, so ping pong player, or a pro bowler. Who do you think you are? I am. <laughs> yeah, there <laughs> no. you go. Uh, I think so it'd be sick to be a pro. Pa- uh, wait, hold on. Am, am I good? Wait, am I good from the go? If you're, yeah, you're a pro. That's what the question what is. What pays the most? I think. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're just going on just what do you think? I think, you like I think ping pong would be sweet I think if I was good. Or table if tennis, I was good. Table tennis would be the, the, the funnest. But don't actually know what the sport's called now. Oh, I'm good ping at pong. It. Well, table tennis is the is the pro version. Yes. Ping pong's like. Well, football is the pro golf. version of soccer. No, but. Football. It's like us playing mini golf, right? It's kind of like the same thing. Like for mini me. putt, not golfing. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, so you're going to pick table tennis or what? Just to be different than you, Dan, I'm going to do badminton. No, you gotta go off of your opinion. I'm gonna go bowling then. Who do you bowling? think you are? I am. That's gonna be you screaming with <laughs> the glasses. <and> <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's uh, in the doghouse with Danny H. Brought to you by Bruce. It's time to brush your teeth. Everyone out there, time to brush those bad boys. Time to brush them. Get rid of the one that you get from the dentist because this one is way better. It actually brushes your teeth and your tongue and all the best gums. features. Gums. Check them out today on Instagram, Twitter, at Bruch. That's B-R-U-U-S-H, at Bruch, IG, Twitter. Check them out. 
these things are amazing. legit. Amazing. Legit. Oh, different words, but. They're so clean. Yeah, I've, I've used mine actually for two weeks now, so. Really? Yep. Your breast stinks. <laughs> First time I uh, brushed my teeth two weeks straight, the longest I have. All right, Dan, what else are we going to get through here? I think that's it. Should we go to our guest? Just talk about our guest here quick before. Yeah, I, I just see you wrong for that one. Yep. He's Mr. a beauty Mike. from Ontario, retired place kicker for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Toronto Argonauts, two-time great cup champion, and also spent time with the Cowboys and the Colts of the NFL. Great chat. And we had a lot of fun with this one. Yeah, Mike Vander, Vanderjet. Or he was kind of ripping you apart because you were saying his name pretty slow. And he yeah, was like, wait. can you say my name right or what's going on here? <laughs> no, I, no, he was, he was a beauty. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. The stories, the stories were pretty good. Hey, we had lots of questions. People wanted to know about him and Peyton Manning, and you, and you're gonna find out in yeah. the interview. But um, I was a little. That was the only time I've been nervous to ask a question. Like, so uh, is this guy uh, gonna uh, hand up the phone, or are you and Peyton buds, or? <laughs> but no, he was. Check it out. You'll enjoy it. Um, yeah, let's yeah, get to it. I think it's a great, great interview. Oh yeah, unreal. All right, hope you guys enjoy it. All righty, we are pleased to be joined by a longtime NFL CFL place kicker. He spent time with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Toronto Ardenauts, the Indianapolis Colts, and the Dallas Cowboys. Two-time Great Cup champ. So with all of that, we are pleased to have on Mike Vander Jack. Thanks for joining the show, man. <laughs> hey, boys. How are you? I had to pause on that one, hey? Didn't sound like Jim Nance. <laughs> yeah, you, you had to make sure you got it right, so you're good. <laughs> awesome. Okay, man. First, I want to clear something up here right away. Is it back-to-back Great Cups? The Wikipedia might have had me wrong, though. Yeah, 96 and 97. Yeah. Yes. I was right. I didn't want to say it, though. Dan was like, nah, you probably shouldn't say it unless he bodies you. So uh, that's a sick, uh, <laughs> sick accomplishment, though. <laughs> okay. Well, when you, got, when you got Doug Flutie as your quarterback, it's yeah, uh, exactly. It, chances are you're going to be pretty good. We were a loaded <laughs> football team then. Yeah, that's, uh, well, I mean, to go back to back, which that's impressive. So, okay, first up, Mike, you know, obviously we're happy to have you on. A uh, buddy of mine, Brad got me in touch with you but long overdue lots of chat about first up where are you right now and uh, what's going on i am in scottsdale arizona oh. so it is a fabulous place to live uh, <clears throat> i'm coaching kickers and punters i'm playing a lot of golf and uh i am the ceo of my own company so i'm i'm trying to make my company as successful off the field as I was on it, so we're uh, we're, we're always pushing forward. That's awesome. Well, <laughs> well, I do want to ask that. Do you want to say where you're working? I mean, that's kind of cool. CEO, it's a big title. Yeah, sl- Slap It On is the name of the company. So S L A P, like Slap It On. <laughs> so I've started a company in the U.S. and I've started a company in Canada. I have uh, a ownership team that is basically second to none. So. Uh, my my partners in the states are, <clears throat> in no particular order, Troy Aikman from the Dallas Cowboys, wow, uh, Johnny Damon from the Red Sox and Yankees, Mike Mano, one of the greatest U.S. born hockey players ever, Steve Smith who has a championship with the San Antonio Spurs, and Kobe Jones, uh, number thirteen for the U.S. national soccer team. He's in the Soccer Hall of Fame. So nice. Oh my, uh, a pretty. <laughs> yeah, pretty good Hall of Fame kind of second to none ownership team there. And uh, in Canada, uh, verbally have agreed to uh, ownership with Damon Allen, Paul Coffey, uh, Larry Walker, wow. and James Hinchcliffe. Nice. So, oh, wow. yeah, so I would say I've got probably <laughs> nine of the greatest. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Know, North North American athletes of all time on my uh, part of my company, so that's wow. It's a it's a pretty good it's a pretty good group to have. It gets you in a lot of doors, but you know Joe Public probably wouldn't get in. So when you <laughs> when you throw Troy Aikman's name around, it people tend to listen to what you have to say. Exactly. Well, I, I was going to say I was just going to send the invoice to to slap it on, but not with those guys on there as the <laughs> the ownership. Group. Oh my <laughs> god, that's unreal, dude. <laughs> Yeah, wow. you, you might get a little bit bigger invoice right back at you, so <laughs> <I'd> be careful. <laughs> okay, I do want to chat about uh, growing up in Oakville, Ontario. You know, what sorts of things were you up to? You, maybe you doing hobbies, uh, sports, obviously football, but uh, just talk about uh, a young Mike Vander Jet. 
<laughs> you're just are you just gonna pause the whole time? We're no, gonna... we're actually losing connection. Ray was just here last time. It's, it's weird. <laughs> no, okay. So it's Mike Vander Jat. Oh, we lost. Night. Okay, we I got lost it. you there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got gotcha. <laughs> you. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I actually grew up playing soccer. My my mom was from England. My dad is from Holland, so they have a big European soccer background. So I played a lot of soccer growing up, travel soccer, last cut for the Canadian national team as a goalie. Um, our travel soccer team went over to play in England in the London Cup. We won the final 6 nothing at uh, Crystal Palace's home, home pitch. Wow. So that was quite the experience nice. for a bunch of 16-year-olds running around England. Um, uh, my mom had questioned whether she wanted to send me over to her family in England and, and have me be a, at least pursue the opportunity of being a goalkeeper professionally. Yeah. Uh, I was the leading scorer for the AAA Oakville Reps hockey team. Uh, I averaged 31 game, 31 points a game in high school basketball, even though there was not a three point line back then, which makes me extremely old, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, Ran track, you know, our 4 by one team was second in Ontario. I came in sixth in 400 hurdles. Oh, Point wow. of the thing is, I my parents hooked me up with a lot of athletic ability, and I have, I've always said, actually, since I retired, that I really feel like I underachieved at being the most accurate kicker in NFL history. I just, I think I've could have, I could have done a whole lot more with what I had. But anyway, yeah. you know, you live with regrets. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you uh, start, when did you make the transition to football and when did you, you know, kind of decide or uh, get the idea that maybe you well, could do, do it as a job one day? Yeah, I, I never really had the vision of, oh my God, I want to play professionally. It, you know, I'm sure everybody has things that go through life and before you know you're here and then before you know you're here and right. you look around, you're like, holy cow, how'd I get here? So mm. um, similar to me, you know, you I was the quarterback in high school. Um, I, you know, the coach is like, all right, who wants to kick? And I'm just like, all right, I'll kick, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I never really took kicking field goals or punting that seriously. I just was a good athlete who, you know, before you know it, I ended up doing those jobs as well. But my main focus was being a quarterback. Yeah. And then when I went, I went to a camp in Toronto, um, Lex Bird, I think sounds familiar. So he had a camp in Toronto. The Michigan State recruit was there. He stood up before the camp and said, hey, if anybody can punt, come see me after this meeting. So I was just like, all right, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I went and punted for the guy, and he was like, wow, you're, you're really good. And then I ended up being the MVP of the camp as a quarterback, and the next day I got a scholarship offer from Michigan State. Okay. So back then we used to go to high school for five years. So I really had intentions of going back for my fifth year of high school. And, yeah. you know, in the States, you don't have to do that. So at the point in which Michigan State said, here's a scholarship, I left high school and went to Michigan State on a football scholarship. And again, you're just, before you know it, you know, you're on scholarship at Michigan State. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, that's kind of how it got rolling. And then, uh, you know, it, it progressed from there. Nice. Okay, well, now I want to ask this question again here. Let us stat check here. The internet says West Virginia. So it, did you ever go to West Virginia? Yeah. So um, after two years at Michigan State, I really, I kind of was in over my head, to be honest with you. I just, you know, I'd never lifted weights in high school. And when you go to Michigan State, you know, one of the first things you do is you got to bench press max bench press. And I'm, out. <laughs> I'm looking around going, holy cow, <laughs> this is not going to be good. So. You know, my roommate was a quarterback, so we put 185 on the bar, and he helped me do it one time. So he did it a lot more than I did. I was just <laughs> struggling to get the thing up once. So, um, and I didn't end up punting. They moved me to receiver. I played a little receiver. I played some quarterback, and you know, I just wasn't happy there. So I went to a junior college in California. Um, I ended up being the starting quarterback, kicker, and punter of that school. It's um, a lot of pressure. Did some good things, and then uh, <laughs> I was I was given a scholarship offer from Long Beach State, Bowling Green, and West Virginia. Kind of came in at the end, so wow. I went and visited West Virginia, and it's a great place. And I took a scholarship and ended up punting my junior year at West Virginia, and then I ended up kicking field goals my senior year at West Virginia. So again, 
you know, before you know it, you're making decisions, and all of a sudden, you're the kicker at a punter at, at West Virginia University. So it was uh, it was a long road and a, and a lot of curves and, and bumps, but before you know it, you're graduated. And then after my junior year at West Virginia, I don't even know how it happened, but I found out that I was drafted in the eighth round by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, nobody, <laughs> nobody told me, nobody, you know, said, oh, by the way, you've been drafted. I don't even remember how I found out, but, you know, <laughs> all right, I guess I'm drafted by Saskatchewan. So uh, after my senior year at West Virginia, I went to, uh, it's actually quite a funny story at, West, at Saskatchewan, but. I went and competed for uh, both the kicker and the punter at, at Saskatchewan in 1993. Yeah, we weren't even born yet, Mike. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> hey, I, I do want to ask before we get into the CFL talk, like, do you find it often, I mean, now probably you're coaching too, you see a lot of players in college that are, you know, they're, they're wide receivers, but they're also, they're, they're place kickers or they, they're just a bunch of guys that play different positions until they really figure out what they are. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the kicker position in general has changed a lot in the last probably 20 years. You know, I think back in the day, even before me, they were the single bar, you know, two different colored shoes, maybe barefoot. You know, they would walk on the field, take a couple of steps, and then walk off. And they weren't really that athletic. And yeah. but, but now, you know, they're all 6'3", 6'4". I mean, now that I'm getting coaching and kicking and punting, you know, and I'm now part of the recruiting process, you know, the recruits want these big, tall kickers, and they'd rather have tall, tall, athletic kickers than not. And I'm just wondering why. Like, yeah, you know, if this little kid can put the ball through the uprights, who cares how tall he is? Mm, but yeah, it's the na- it's the nature of the beast. They, they you got to pass the eye test before you move on to the next stage. Yeah, okay, Mike. Oh, I, I do want to like, backtrack back to the riders thing there. So, did you ever actually come to Saskatchewan and like? I mean, you played one year, right? Did that you played one year, correct? Uh, I, I, uh, it's, it's a great story. So Don Matthews was the head coach. Um, Brett Maddich was the punter and Dave Ridgeway was the kicker. So, okay, yeah. um, I just, I came in and I really competed at both. Um, and I would say Dave probably didn't treat me that well just because, you know, he was the veteran and, you know, I was the young kid with the big leg. So I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to speak for him, but I'm sure the writing was on the wall. Holy cow, this guy could come in here and take my job. He's probably cheaper. You know, he's younger. He's stronger. But D- Dave Ridgway is a legend in Saskatchewan, mm-hmm. so I don't know why he would think that. But anyway, so I beat Brett Maddich out, and I ended up being the punter going into the opening game in BC. Uh, I would say we had some long snapping issues. So I think the first snap that I had, actually, I think the first punt that I had in BC was blocked <laughs> and then I had another punt snap go over my head um, so it was really quite an eventful first game and then we had our <laughs> home opener the week later I had a couple of bounce snaps I had one that was high over my head but I actually caught it and got it down and punted it and I thought that was kind of almost a touchdown saving <laughs> play yeah. so then my sister was getting married in Toronto I was uh, I was given permission by the coaching staff to go to the wedding and then come back and continue on the process. So I got back from the wedding. The flights were booked by the riders. I was back in time for practice, but didn't go. Wow. So not sure. I'm not sure why. I just went home. Mm. Next day, Coach Matthews brought me into his office and said, we're cutting you for rookie mistakes. Oh, wow. So my my <laughs> career with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders was quite short lived. Wow. Well, did that did, did that snapper get fired? I mean, if he's blowing balls over your head, maybe this. I don't know what's <laughs> going on there. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, at the CFL, you just there's only 36 guys on a roster, so mm-hmm. yeah. you know, he was probably the he was probably the best that they had, and you know, there's not a whole lot out there. I'm sure there's probably some guys that you could have, but could they do other things and. You know, you just got to juggle the lineup and make sure that you're yeah. able to, you know, field the team and still have special teams guys. And so I'm sure he was uh, he was at least on the team probably for the – I don't even remember his name, but he was on the team <laughs> probably throughout the year. Right. Yeah, and so then you went and uh, played in your home province with the Argos. And what was that like? Any good memories playing there? Well, 
the, he's like, yeah, my winning. <laughs> my, my story actually is pretty good. So after I was cut in Saskatchewan, I went back to West Virginia, finished my degree. Uh, I then ended up working at a sporting goods company for four twenty-five an hour, you Shit. know, selling selling shoes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I would always watch the CFL, and you know, anytime a team would struggle kicking or punting, I'd be on the phone going, "Hey, bring me in." <laughs> uh, yeah. So I ended up I ended up signing with Toronto. Bob Obilovich was the coach in Toronto in '94. Um. So I signed in Toronto and got cut. Wayne Lamley, who was the kicker and punter there, was awful. But um, I missed I missed an 18 yard field goal in a preseason game, and I think I was cut the next day. <laughs> oh jeez! So I was I was cut by the Argos in '94, and then I I re-signed with the Argos in '95. Same thing. Wayne Lamley was still the guy. I brought back in. I was cut again. Uh, I was then picked up by the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Paul as Baldison was struggling. A little bit, so they brought me in. I can. I was kicking with Hamilton for a week. They had their second preseason game in Ottawa, and I and they said they're not going to bring me to the game. But if Paul struggles, they're making a move. Well, Paul went five for five and kicked the game winning field goal. <laughs> so I was I was cut the next day. Ouch. Uh, yeah. So I've been cut by Saskatchewan, Toronto, and Toronto and Hamilton already. <laughs> A year later, Ray Yock, who was the offensive coordinator in Saskatchewan at the time that I was there, was now the head coach of the Minnesota Fighting Pike in the one and only year of existence in the Arena League. So, Oh, yeah, we have uh, questions Ray, on that, Mike. <laughs> yeah, Ray, Ray brought me in, said, you don't have to compete for the job. You're my kicker. Um, so I went to Minnesota to play for the Fighting Pike, and... Uh, two games into the regular season, which seems to be the max. I'm, <laughs> I got cut because I kept kicking the ball on kickoffs into the stands. Oh, you're supposed geez. to, supposed to, yeah, you're supposed to kick it into the net at the end. While well, I kept hooking it into the stands, and when you do that, the other team gets the ball oh. at midfield, and it's only a 50 yard field. So that right. was <laughs> that was a problem. So obviously, I got cut. But the funny thing is. Um, Don Matthews, who had picked me, who had drafted me in Saskatchewan, was now the head coach of the Toronto Argonauts in '96. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, so comes full circle. Yeah, oh yeah. So now <laughs> the Toronto Argonauts go, we want to sign you, and I'm like, are you guys nuts? <laughs> like the guy that cut me two years ago is now the head coach. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So I uh, I went and signed for the Toronto Argonauts in '96 you know, a couple of weeks after getting cut in Minnesota. And uh, they just signed Doug Flutie, and they got this pinball Clemens, and they got Paul Mazzotti, and they got Jimmy the Jet Cunningham and yeah. Robert Drummond and all these guys. And the only two kickers on the staff were on the roster were me and an American. So at the time, <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, well, this is going to be good. I got a, I got a chance. I'm a Canadian in, an, in a Canadian position against another guy who's an American. So yeah. uh, we, we went and competed. And uh, that ended up being pretty good. And the, the crazy thing is there was, a, there was a game-winning field goal in one of the preseason games, and we were alternating kicks. So I had my shirt undone, and I was just kind of hanging out on the <laughs> sidelines. We're in overtime, and... Uh, it was it was Rich Fall was this kicker's name and it was his turn to kick the next field goal so it wasn't my turn and Don Matthews walks over to me and he goes hey listen you're up I want you to hit the next one <laughs> I'm like oh god <laughs> it's so, a Friday night light uh, where's your helmet <laughs> I, exactly I tucked my shirt that's a good story too I got to tell you about the helmet story right. and the Grey Cup story holy cow I got <laughs> there you go that's so, good um, I, I tuck my shirt in. I run out onto the field against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Doug Flutie's the freaking holder. I'm just some <laughs> rookie kid being cut, cut all over. And I bang the 38-yard field goal to win the game. And I, I think they probably cut the next the kid the next day. And nice. I, you know, I ended up going in and uh, I was the MVP, the Canadian MVP of the Grey Cup uh, at the end of that year, going five for five. You know, and then the following year I was four for four in the Grey Cup. So, you know, I've been to the Grey Cup twice and, and nine for nine is uh is a pretty good little career for yeah is that good or what <laughs> holy canadian yeah. kid from oakville so yeah absolutely 
Okay, Mike, I, I want to ask now, obviously, the NFL signed with the Indianapolis Colts, I believe, or you drafted. Because up here in Canada, we just kind of – we see all the guys come back from the NFL. We don't really hear how – unless you're, like, a, what, a first, first year rounder, they get drafted high. But uh, just walk us through the NFL uh, experience there. So uh... – You there, Mike? Yeah, so I just had to put it on mute so I could <laughs> – oh. All good. Start my car. Oh, didn't want to. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, Mike so driving. I I ended up having I ended up having eight workouts with NFL teams after I had played two years in Canadian League. So you know, I got a funny story with the New York Jets. Um, you know, I I didn't sleep the night before. I was sick as a dog. Um, I had a good workout. Well, I had a workout lined up for the Jets the next day. You know, I go work out. It's a cloudy, rainy, nasty day. And I look up into the building, and Bill Parcells, who's the head coach at the time, is looking out the window watching my workout <laughs> as I'm kicking for whoever the special teams coach. Yeah. So, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes later, I look up, and the window's closed, and the curtains are drawn because I was awful. <laughs> I mean, I, I just... I was I was sick. I didn't have that great of a day, and uh, you know I, I guess Bill had seen enough. So um, I I tried out for the the Green the Chicago Bears, the Minnesota Vikings, the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, I had an offer to punt for the Green Bay Packers, um, and then I had a I had an offer from the Indianapolis Colts to both compete again as the kicker and the punter. Nice. I led the CFL in punting, and I was a pretty good kicker. So they, I said, listen, you can come in and you can compete against both guys. One, But the, the bad news is uh, the punter was in the Pro Bowl the year before, and so was the kicker. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. I, uh, but they had given me a big enough signing bonus that uh, even if I missed half of a CFL season for trying out the NFL, you're okay. Financially, it was enough. It was enough to cover it. I go back to the CFL in September. If, if you know, if I didn't make it, you know, and I'd end up being a pretty good CFL guy because obviously, I, at that time, I would have been a pretty hot commodity. So the numbers yeah. would have been a lot better. So, right. but you know, I I ended up beating out the kicker in Indianapolis, and you know, four years later, I I had registered enough kicks to be the most accurate kicker in NFL history. Eighty-five point six percent. Is that yeah, any good? <laughs> Holy! It's a pretty crazy story. Yeah, that's insane. Um, which place was your favorite to play in the NFL? Oh, yeah, it's the craziest stadium. Yeah, too. Uh, I would say the Kansas City Chiefs environment is probably the best environment to play in. Mm -hmm. You know, they they sing songs. The you know when they do the national anthem at the home of the Braves at the end of the song, they say the home of the Chiefs as loud as humanly possible. I mean. <laughs> place is electric they sing songs when they score touchdowns on you and it's a little bit like in an english premier soccer league kind of atmosphere where yeah yeah you Always really chanting. feel like they're on top of you and yeah yeah that turn i've been, I've been so, to one nfl game mike that was in arizona and it was they always did the third down <laughs> kind of cool good experience <laughs> oh, um, we lost mike i'm here i'm just <laughs> i'm um, you sound like you're making funny noises. Oh, I, no, I did the third down thing from Arizona when they're on the – yeah, doesn't matter. Moving yeah. on. No, I, I was just going to ask you, what was uh, what was the fans like in the Arena Football League? Oh, yeah. They're crazy. Uh, well, Minnesota was the new team, so they're really the, – the, the stadium was half full, and then I played a game at home. And then I think I played a game in Houston or something. Um, you know, it was, it's – you know, the stadium's half full. It's it's not quite an unbelievable environment, I'd say. It's uh it was a little bit lackadaisical, if for yeah. lack of a better mm -hmm. term. Fair enough. I uh my my helmet story before I forget is I was uh with the Argos and Paul Mazzotti, the one of the greatest receivers in Toronto history, was my roommate every time we traveled. So I'm, uh, we're kicking out of our own end zone in Calgary, and I'm running onto the field, and Paul Mazzotti's banging his helmet. And I'm thinking to I'm thinking to myself, he wants me to hit a good punt, right? Like he's like, "Let's go, Mike. You know, let's hit a good one." And he's banging his helmet. 
<laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I got you. I got you. And I keep running. And he's like, no, Vandy, your helmet. <laughs> I was running onto the field with no helmet. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you don't play the game without a helmet yeah. on? <laughs> That's unreal. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh-huh. And, and my other story is that I've, it's, it's crazy that I've won, I've won. I've been in two Grey Cups. I've won two and lost one. And you're like, well, how the hell have you been in two? You've won two and lost one. Well, one night I went to the bar after we won the Grey Cup with the Grey Cup. Oh. So, you know, I'm in, I'm in Oakville. Place is packed. Everybody's taking pictures with the uh, Grey Cup. You know, I'm 27 years old at the time, single. So, obviously, enjoying myself. <laughs> okay, well, it's 2 o'clock a.m. It's time to go. Gray Cups, Gray Cups nowhere to be found. <laughs> oh, I've lost the Gray Cup. <laughs> oh my gosh, where was it? So, I I take a girl home with me. So actually, to Mike O'Shea's apartment. <laughs> yeah. So the Gray Cup at that time was not my main focus. Apparently, the police <laughs> at some point got a call from some girl who got home from partying that night. She's like, um. The gray cup is in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I guess a couple of her, a couple of her college buddies had swiped it and took it out and brought it to her apartment. Wow. So That's the. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, I I I, re, I recouped the, I recouped the coupe de gray. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All righty, Mike. We got to ask some golf questions here. Um, you mentioned off the top, you're playing lots of golf. You know, where do you play full time? Do you have membership anywhere? Uh, let's talk about your golf game. So, uh, there's a place called talking stick. Uh, oh yeah. There's 30. It. Yeah. Talking stick is right near top golf in Scottsdale talking stick resort. Uh, it's got a pretty cool casino. I play there three or four times a week. Um, actually what's pretty cool is a few weeks ago, I got paired up with this couple of husband and wife who worked for Adidas. So, um, I told him about my company, and it turns out that this guy is pretty much Patrick Mahomes' right-hand man. Wow. So um, we are beginning the process of discussing getting Patrick Mahomes as part of Slap It On. And nice. I think, it's, I think it's safe to say that if you were to ask to name an athlete that you would love to start a franchise around for the next 10 years in any sport, I'm guessing Patrick Mahomes would probably get more votes than anybody else. Right. Yeah. 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 Wow. So it's uh, pretty exciting, and uh, I'm probably a three handicap. I, I I I take my golf as seriously as I take anything. I want to be great at everything I do, and as you should. Golf absolutely. Golf is no different. So, you know, bogeys annoy me, and double bogeys are just unacceptable. So yeah, there 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 could be a club flying around. <laughs> In fact, I make double. That's awesome. So, like, well, who are you playing with? I mean, mostly. I mean, you said you mentioned talking stick. I, I mean, how often are you playing? Four or five times a week? Yeah, three or four actually. And uh, I actually, when I was uh, coaching in high school, and my son was in high school, I was coaching. So I coached Christian Kirk, who is the first round pick of the Arizona Cardinals football team, and Byron Murphy, who was his second round pick. Wow. So they both they both went to high school here. They went to. Texas A&M, Christian did, and Byron went to Washington, and now they're both playing for the Cardinals. And when I was playing just the other day, the uh, the the uh, starter was like, "Oh, Christian was out just out here." So I texted Christian. So Christian and I are going to go out here pretty soon. Nice. That's uh, awesome. There's there's a guy, Bryant Westbrook was the first round pick of the Detroit Lions as a defensive back. We coached together, so we play some golf together. So. Um, there are some, but then I've, I've, I've just gotten to be friends with, you know, I don't want to see regular dudes, but regular dudes that have normal mm, yeah. jobs and aren't, aren't professional athletes, but they love golf and, you know, so we go play then too. Okay. Well, I have to ask quickly here before Danny jumps in, uh, Tony Romo, you let like, you golf much with him. He was my holder when I was in Toronto or sorry, Dallas. So, yeah. um, I knew him a little bit. We, we did play some golf. I played golf with him and Jason Witten a few times. Um, but, you know, when I went to Dallas, 
you know, when you're when you're a new guy on a team, it's not that simple to just jump in and be part of the crew that they've had for years. So, yeah. you know, t- Tony and Jason were friends. And actually, I played probably more golf with uh, the long snapper, who's on also another Canadian, actually. He just became – so L.P. Latissour, <laughs> you may not know him, but no. he just broke the record for – most most NFL games by a Canadian. Oh wow, wow. that's awesome! So he was he was there before I got there, and he's still there. Holy. So he's had a he he just broke Eddie Murray's NFL record for games as a Canadian. Nice. So he's uh, he's been there a long time, been very successful. Mm-hmm. All righty, Mike. Off to our uh, questions from the gallery. It's a new set. Well, same segment. Otherwise, I said new. Uh, brought to you by Bruce. Bruce is an oral care brand on a mission to give you your cleanest, whitest teeth. And healthiest mouth ever. Check them out on social media at Bruce on IG and Twitter. That's at Bruce B R U U S H. All right, Mike. Lowest round ever. Golf sixty-seven. Actually, yeah, wow. it's uh, just one of those days where the ball just found the hole more often than not. But I shot seventy just the other day, so. Oh boy! Nice. You know, those are those are, you know. Better than average. Right. Yeah. Um, if you could play with anyone in the world, who would be your ultimate foursome? Oh, it's funny. I ask people this all the time what their <laughs> ultimate foursome is. So yeah. um, I I have a, a few tattoos, and one of them is Michael Jordan. So yeah. um, I, I have the Jordan logo tattoo. I, I went and played in the American Century <clears throat> in Tahoe one year actually the year that I didn't miss a field goal with the Colts. So I'm, you know, Jordan's there every year, and I'm looking at Jordan every day. I'm watching him going, oh, my God, there he is. Oh, my God, yeah. Michael Jordan. Oh, my God. So I finally get enough nerve to walk over to him because I had brought a Jordan jersey in my golf bag because I wanted him to sign it. So uh, I walked over. I said, hey, Mike, well, my name's Mike Vanerjad. I'm the kicker for the Colts. And he was like, man, I know who you are. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so he's uh, he's like, you still got I was like, yeah. He's like, man, that's – so the fact that Michael Jordan, <coughs> one, knew who I was, and two, knew the streak that I was on was really freaking cool. So I was like, hey, Mike, I got, I got a bag in my jersey. Do you mind signing it? He's like, yeah, no problem. I was like, I'll go get it. He's like, no, I'll go with you. So now I'm walking across the <laughs> wow. driving range with Michael Jordan, and I'm just, this is, sorry, this is effing ridiculous. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. that's awesome. I, I, I always joke as the next time I see him, it'll just be like, hey, Mike, what's up, man? You know, that kind of. <laughs> His best so buddies he, now. <laughs> he's uh, he's my, one of my foursome. I have a man crush on Justin Timberlake. I don't know why. I just think he's a very talented, dude. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, Joe Montana was my quarterback growing up. So nice. uh, those are my three. It's a good pick. Good picks. That's awesome. All right, Mike. This is a question we ask all you guys, whether it's NHL, NFL, whatever. Uh, yeah. Everyone answers it. So cheapest guy you played with. And we can do one in the CFL and one in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I don't know what I want to throw these people under the bus. Um, because <laughs> uh, now you're like shit. There's like four or five of them now. I'm just trying to think of all. Just for just because of where you are, I'm gonna say Jeremy O'Day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. We like that. That's awesome. And, uh, NFL. I don't know, but I'll, I'll answer in a roundabout way. So every time we used to go to away games, there was six or seven or eight of us the night before the game that would always eat together. So we would play credit card roulette. You know what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we can't afford to play it, though. But, yeah, we know what it is. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to, like, the nicest steakhouses in New Orleans and, like, Chicago. And so then we all hand our credit card to the waitress, and she put shuffles them behind her back and, Whatever credit card she pulls out, that's who's paying for dinner that night. I mean, it is. It, and our long snapper, Justin Snow, he lost six times. Oh, <laughs> like oh my. The, the numbers that chances are that you're going to lose once are pretty pretty good <laughs> that you're not going to ever lose. But to lose six times, <laughs> that's that's a lot of money for you know for a long snapper. So anyway, yeah. those those are, those are my two money answers I got for you. <laughs> Um, who is who was the funniest guy you played with? Well, be... uh, 
other than me, I will say <laughs> uh, probably Peyton. If you've seen any of Peyton Manning's commercials, oh, yeah. he's very he's got a very quick wit, dry sense of humor. Um, you know, I will say that I had a Nerf basketball hoop over my locker, and there was a lot of three on three games on a daily basis, and uh, Peyton would run through with I'll say less than the adequate amount of clothing on, and would <laughs> steal the ball and dunk it and. Uh, generally speaking, all the black guys would go, okay, game over. Like, the white guy has ruined the game. Yeah. <laughs> so, was, so he's quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, Mike, I mean, now you brought up Peyton. I mean, are you okay if I ask? Like, are you guys, like, cool? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, why? Why would you ask that? Um, uh, Matt, honestly, there was a lot of questions that came in about that, and I was like, yeah. we both were like, ah, I don't know. But then you brought up Peyton, you're like, oh, he's a funny guy, and then. Yeah, so I mean, Listen, we're, we're curious. Um, we played four more years after that whole debacle, so um, everybody kind of thinks that, oh, my God, they, they hate each other. Or mm. um, Actually, the, the next time I saw him, I walked into the weight room, and I was like, dude, what were you thinking? Because he said some stupid-ass stuff, and, I'm, and he's like, what was I thinking? What were you thinking? I was like, yeah, good point. <laughs> so... Um, we buried the hatchet pretty quick. The media tries to make something out of yeah. yeah. a lot of the times. Um, I actually texted Peyton. We were texting each other just last week. So uh, we still communicate. And we accomplished a lot together as teammates. Um, so yeah. our birthday is the exact same day, which is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, we, we are fine, and we buried the hatchet, <laughs> even though the media would rather us hate each other. Yeah, yeah. So it's not that's just not the case. That's what they do. Well, that's good to hear. Actually, the, for, for a golf story, what's crazy is a guy I play golf with was in a suite at the Denver Nuggets game last week, and he's texting me going, hey, listen, Peyton is 10 rows in front of me in the seat. Tell him to come up to my suite. So I was texting Peyton going, hey, listen, if you want to go sit up in that suite, I was trying to hook Peyton up. You know, he probably – tickets weren't that good. You know, they probably mm-hmm. didn't hook him up very good. Yeah. Just kidding. So <laughs> I texted him, and he was like, no, I'm with my kids. You know, my kids would ruin the suite. So, anyway. Um, That's awesome. So we were texting We were texting just last week. And actually, what's crazy is I was texting with the quarterback coach of the Buccaneers. So Clyde Christensen and I used to golf every Friday – before games in Indianapolis, and now he's the quarterback coach of the Bucks. Wow. So I was texting him a couple weeks ago and listen, hey, congratulations. You know, there aren't very many guys that have a Super Bowl ring with Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. Yeah. So okay. that was pretty cool. He might be the only guy walking the planet, actually. Mm, yeah. um, so he first question was, how's my golf game? And I said, well, how good? How's yours? He's like, well, I'm going to play Augusta Tuesday after the Masters. Oh. And I'm like, you prick. <laughs> no kidding. I was like, I was like, are you going with Tom? He's like, no, I'm going with 18, which is Peyton. So oh. Peyton and him played the, the uh, Augusta just last Tuesday. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Okay, yeah. Mike, two more here for you. Uh, are, are you a, or were you a soccer cleat and a, and a football cleat or both? Or what do you even wear half the time? They always look so weird. Well, uh, a lot of the time when I played, we still had old school turf, which is, seems unrealist, unbelievable too. But um, so I would have a basketball shoe on my left foot and then a soccer cleat of some sort on my right. But when they when they did away with turf shoes, I tried to be like I tried to be an athlete who kicked. I didn't I didn't want to be a kicker. I didn't want to be the the single bar, two different shoes. Yeah. So I tried to have as cool a looking shoes and look as much of like an athlete as possible. That's why I say when I underachieve being a kicker, I really feel like I, I should be re reborn in something other than a field goal kicker. But anyway, (laughs) uh, I I did pretty well with what I had. So, um, I, I tried to wear the exact same shoes on both feet. Now they were probably different sizes. My, my left shoe was probably a 12 and my right shoe was a 10 and a half. Cause yeah, as kickers, we want that night tight, form-fitting shoe, so I would uh, make better contact. So the size difference is probably the only thing different from a sh- one shoe to the other. Right. Hmm. All right, last one here, Mike. I know we got to go here. So what is your 
you know, or what was your pregame, you know, ritual or root, you know, let's do a pregame ritual. And then before yeah. you kick, what do you do? Especially a field goal. So you realize that one, I'm old. Two, <laughs> I haven't been in, in the CFL or the NFL in 13 years. So you're asking me pregame from <laughs> two decades ago. But Absol anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, you know, I wear number 13, so I'd like to think I wasn't superstitious, but there were certain things that I did that um, were more of a ritual than a superstition. Uh, I got on a streak, I think might have been even 2003, when I didn't, when I started not missing, that I, I'd have your salad the night before the game. Um, I always put my left shoe on before my right shoe. I always put my left sock on before my right sock. I always put my left thigh pad in my pants before my right thigh pad because I always felt like even though you're right-footed, you know, your plant foot is the one that's taking care of you. So yeah, right. I mentally always made sure that my left foot, you know, knew that I that I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And then uh, every time I would walk to the stadium, as soon as we got off the bus, I would – I would walk up one hash mark, touch the uprights, walk up the other hash marks, touch the uprights, and go into the locker room. Now, normally it was just to be able to feel the wind at all four kind of corners of the field. Because a lot of our kicks came from the hat. Yeah. So, you know, you wanted to be able to get a good feeling of what the wind was doing in all four corners. But when I was in Indianapolis, we played in the dome. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't necessarily need to feel the wind at all four corners, but it just became a, a ritual that I got used to doing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Mike, this has been so much fun today, man. I, I well, I know we both appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, we had a lot of fun today. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Mike. Cool. Call me anytime. Anytime you want to talk about how good or bad of Jeremy O'Day's job he's doing, <laughs> I'm all for it. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> all right. All right, Mike. Take yeah. care, man. All right. Thanks a lot. See Bye. you guys. Bye. Thanks. Alrighty, episode 70, Mike Vanderjat. Wow. I had a lot of fun with that one, Dan. Yeah, that was good. Uh, thanks to Mike for taking the time to do that one because, um, you know, we were kind of on, on a time limit, but it was good. A lot of good stories. Yeah, he was going to a kicking camp or he was kicking, he was teaching someone. Runs his own kick. company. Yeah. Um, bunch of big names that, yeah, that he that said. Was cool. That was crazy, actually, to hear those names that he works with and stuff. And the guys he's going to get on in the future, that's unreal. We're, like, wait, like, we're waiting for our call. Yeah. Come on, Mike. You calling us soon? We're from Regina. Yeah. Mike was good. I, I liked uh, all his stories were kind of funny and cool. Uh, the one uh, about the Great Cup getting uh, Great Cup getting taken. stolen and yeah, taken. Stolen. And what, what, who had it again? Uh, some girl. Oh, yeah. So, said it showed up at her house or apartment or whatever. Some dudes took it. and Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty sweet, though. Yeah. No, that was cool. You know, playing the NFL is pretty sweet. Obviously, uh -huh. I have no idea, but. Definitely um, pretty cool. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning story, yeah. They're they're bros. They're, they're bros. They're fine. They're actually good buddies. Um, I think I actually texted them like a few days later we were talking about it and stuff, and I said, hey, how does uh, you know Romo uh, or Manning sound like coming on? He goes, really shooting for the stars, eh, kid? <laughs> <laughs> Just, <laughs> that's so, hilarious. Uh, they're good buddies, but I think we'll have to build a relationship yeah, a little before. better with Mike uh, before we get those guys on, but it was worth a shot. Yeah. Because if you don't ask, you'll never know. Exactly. So no. Mike Vanderjet, thanks for coming on though, Mike. Yeah, if you didn't listen to it or you want to re-listen to it, just reset, reboot, zoom. reset, and play it, and enjoy it. Uh, Dan, what else? Not much else. What do we got uh, coming up here? Golf, get out and golf. I'm gonna try and golf. To my, I said this to myself. I'm gonna try and golf at least once a week from now until yeah, end of the season. I think it's doable, right? I think it's doable. I think you should come play with me one time. We'll go play it together. Yeah. And Troy and get Christian back out again. I'll get a few more practice rounds at first before I play with you then. I don't, I don't always think I'm going to judge or something. Well, just, this guy judges me every day. Oh, what was that swing? <laughs> okay. Well, okay. yeah, it was no. shit, but let's fix it now. <laughs> no, but you're kind of a bad, uh, you know, I go with Drew golfing and just like, I just want to drink. Every time I've gone with you, I've drank. Except the one day was freezing cold. I know, but you're at, least, you're at least good when you drink. I just go to shit. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll go soon, though. That's a trick to the trade. The old ninth grade to nine trick. <laughs> Anyhow, Danny H. It was good to see you, though. Yeah. No Troy. No Miss Troy. you, bro. We'll see you soon. Um, yeah. Another big gas coming next week. It's just what we do around here. Find a way. We get it done. Find a way. There's a way. When there's a will, there's a way. Can't find the angle. Just dangle. Oh. Coast to coast like butter toast. 
winner, winner, chicken dinner. Trying there to make it is. It. There it is. That's yeah, it. Done. We're done. Okay. That's it. Danny H. Good seeing you. Yeah, good seeing we'll you. Chat soon. A little mic toucher. We'll, we'll touch. touch. We'll touch. We'll touch mics. Touch tips. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, everyone listening in your vehicles or watching us online, have a great week. You know, I'm, I'm going to cut it with the whole Wednesday, Thursday thing. Just listen, that? listen to the podcast. Yeah. Check good. it out. Subscribe on YouTube. Link below, I think. Subscribe on YouTube. Check us out. Enjoy it. We're going to bring content. It's coming new. Coming soon. Coming new. See you coming later. New, coming new. Have, have a great Wednesday. We'll talk to you next week. Peace. See ya.